Good afternoon, guys. It is 4 o'clock on a Sunday. Yes, I still have a job. I'm just off today. Vacation's over. And I just wanted to take you guys through some of the steps of getting an airplane sliced and getting the files, where to actually get some of these planes from, um, what slicer I use, what settings I use, some of that jazz, just so you guys who really don't know where to start, which unfortunately is a lot of people because this is relatively new to the hobby. At least you guys have somewhere you can go from and kind of hit the ground, at least walking, not running quite, because you try to hit the ground running before you can walk, you're going to wind up really frustrated. So without further ado, I'm going to spin this around, put you guys on a tripod and uh, show you how I do it. First things first, guys, where are you going to get these STL files for these airplanes. Now, these are the main websites and the main designers that I've worked with. Lately, it's been Colts3D.com is my main go-to website because my three main designers that I love working with are all on Colts. It's a very easy user interface. And there's even small time designers that you can find on here that have some pretty good airplanes. So first designer I'm going to mention is 3D Aeroworks. This guy, Mark, he is an absolute master designer he's a full-scale aviation pilot in real life so he's very well versed in aviation he understands it down to its core and it really shows in his designs and i'm happy enough to be able to say that i was honored to be able to design an airplane with mark the 70 millimeter super scorpion i have it hanging up in the hangar i'll pan to it once i'm done showing you guys all of this um great scale models couple of great sport models in here, some gliders, if you're looking for something like that. Then we have Kyle. Um, you probably know him as Built Fast from YouTube. This guy has been an ambassador with 3D printed models to the RC hobby. This guy exploded. His planes are easy to print. They're easy to build. They're easy to fly. I mean, honestly, if, if, if you guys have a hard time building one of these airplanes, you got a lot more to worry about than having to fly an RC airplane. These things, they are so idiot proof it, it's amazing um and kyle even just released a trainer airplane so for those of you guys who are new to rc and new to 3d printing there's your plane right there it's a 50 millimeter edf scout the electronics are cheap the files are cheap i mean i don't even know how much he charges what is it 14 dollars for the file so you have that file forever you never have to worry about getting spare parts you never have to worry about running out of airplanes you could print this airplane 100 times and you never have to worry about it the only thing you have to worry about is running out of filament. And then we have Thomas. This is Sodi's 3D. This is someone that I just recently started working with. He's a very nice guy from the conversations that I've had with him. And from what I've built of his, he's predominantly sport uh, models. I'm not sure if he actually has any trainers. Oh, he does have a trainer on here, is it? Yeah, he has a beginner EDF jet as well. But predominantly what I've built from him is the sport jets and he has a lot of thrust vectoring airplanes which do some crazy stuff in the air i mean if you're looking if you're someone with experience and you're looking for something to change it up these thrust vectoring airplanes will they'll blow your socks off they'll blow everybody at the field socks off so that's 3dcults.com and those are my three main designers if you want to go somewhere else rc 3d market my buddy mark is also on this website there are also some models that may not be on cults that are on here and then the first 3D printed airplane that I ever built was from 3dladprint.com. It was the 90 millimeter MiG-15. Now that brings me to my next thing, which is something to be very cognizant of. Some of these files are old. And the reason why I say that is files don't expire, but the electronic components, if they're not something that's very universal, if it's something that was very specific to that model, it may be discontinued. So the 90 millimeter MiG-15, the retracts that 3D lab print used in that airplane that were included in the manual are no longer available. So you're going to have to do some hunting to find something comparable, which it's, it's a bit annoying if I'm being honest. So just be cognizant of that. Most designers offer the manual for free before you purchase the files. And if you're looking for something that, or airplanes that use a universal um, electronic uh, configuration, Kyle, I mean, his planes are practically um, like Lego sets. They all use the same 50 millimeter EDFs, the same ESCs, the same receivers. You can use the same electric components in almost every single one of these airplanes. And they all fly different. They all look different. They all fly great. 
but they all shine in different aspects. And then for those of you guys who like the flat foamies, the Dollar Tree foam board, rcplans.com. This place, you have free plans. Go to the dollar store, buy a sheet of foam board, slap this on there off your printer, bing, bang, boom, you're rocking and rolling. I know some of you guys are going to say, oh, Flight Test has that. I've built a couple of Flight Test airplanes, and I'm not trying to defame them in any way. I like what they're trying to do for the hobby, but I think for what they're asking for those foam airplanes, it is extremely overpriced and you can do something from this website for a fraction of what you would pay from flight test so that's that that's where you can get all of your components and then that is the 70 millimeter super scorpion this airplane is i i don't even know guys it's got full flying tailorons it's got dual rudders it's got ailerons it's got flaps it's got retracts this airplane has the works and the configurations you can do with this thing are endless you could program crow for the ailerons and the uh flaps you could have the rudders act as drag rudders the fall flying stabs offer control like nothing i've flown and it is so stinking floaty man it, it it's it's just next level and mark even designed there uh, right there <laughs> these little uh wingtip smoke bomb pods for uh smoke bombs if you wanted to run it with that so keep that in mind and now that brings us to our slicer predominantly i'm using bamboo studio because i've since migrated from my cr10 v2 my artillery x1 to both bamboo machines now i know some of you guys who like to have the open source things are going to say a sacrilege blah, 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 blah. but as someone who started with the anet a8 back in the day for those of you guys who know you know that thing was a box of parts you put it together and the print quality was subpar at best going from that to this is it's like going from a ford model t to a lamborghini aventador it is just night and day now this slicer is very intuitive it's very user friendly i love the interface and Typically, the filaments that Bamboo Lib sells are amazing. I have had zero issues with any Bamboo Lib filaments, but I will say some of the presets on the lightweight PLA, in my experience, needed to be adjusted. So that's what we're going to go into right here. So this is your filament uh, selection section, right? Uh, flex, huh? Filament selection section, that kind of rhymes. But so I made a mod for PLA Arrow. And this is different than what your standard settings would be. I actually forgot what I changed. I just saved it. So I'm going to put this on the screen, leave it up. You guys go through it, change whatever you got to change. I just found this work the best for my machines. And my machines are the Bamboo Lab, the X1 Carbon, and the A1. Not the A1 Mini, the regular A1. This These settings work great for Bamboo Lab PLA Arrow. And then... This is the settings that I use for the actual slicer components. Now, this is specifically for the built fast airplanes, and typically built fast does a 3% grid or a 3% uh, gyroid infill. And the gyroid infill, since I started using it, it is a game changer, total, total game changer. So I'm just going to scroll through here once again, and whatever you guys have to adjust, go through it adjust all these things um there's one setting that i had to do that really helped out with my printing where it was less uh gobbly cook like i said you can do grid or you can do gyroid lately i've been doing gyroid a lot actually i added this let me save this save that um and the speed you have to slow this thing down because you have to let the filament have a chance to foam and you don't want to wind up rushing it and have the file come out like oh from god um typically support i don't have to run but sometimes you may have to that's up to you if you have experience with 3d printing or if not like i said the uh designer kyle and thomas both have facebook groups built fast and so these 3d both have facebook groups they're very active if they're gonna have it if you have any questions they're there to help you um <clears throat> I found one thing that was pretty important that I did was the slicing by object. Um, that helps reduce a lot of stringing, especially if you're going to print a couple of parts. The only issue with that is the parts have to be pretty small. And I just personally like printing by object because 
if there is a failure of the print, you're not worrying about losing half of four, five, six parts that you just wasted filament on. At least it's just one part that happened to fail and you restart it and you know, you're rocking and rolling. So that's the settings that I use on the bamboo lab slicer for my bamboo lab machines. Um, and then, yeah, I'll uh, make a video about how to put these things together, what glue I use, what electronics I use and all that jazz. But until then, um, stay tuned guys. And I really, uh, I really hope you guys have some good flights and I'm excited to help you guys get involved with this stuff, man, because it is, it really is a game changer. It's going to help your pocketbook and it, it feels a lot better than spending $800 on a piece of foam and electronics to have something that you built yourself, bring that down to the field and be able to show everybody how well these things fly and have the comfort of knowing that you never have to worry about running out of spare parts. You know, you crash it, you build it again as many times as you have to. You never have to worry about the mold going out when you're sitting there with the electronics wondering what you're going to do with them. But until then, stay tuned, guys.